Hello and welcome to the Salesforce Health channel and today we are going to talk about Apex variables and data types which you are going to use every time when you are uh, writing a code in Apex or when you are programming into Apex. So let's begin. Okay, so variables are basically the named value holders which stores a particular value inside them and whenever you access them that uh, they return that particular value. As Apex is a strongly typed language, that means that every variable needs to be declared with that particular data type of which type the information that it's going to store. Like let me take an example. If you want to store the integer type information, you're going to create a variable with the data type integer. If you want to store a date into your program, then in that case with the variable, you're going to use date as a data type. So data type and variable goes together. First you need to write down the data type of which type of information you want to store and then the name of the variable in which you want to store that particular information which you will access later on in your program. So here is a simple example. Here it's the data type that you have to write down then the variable name uh, using which you are going to reference that particular value which is stored into it uh, later on in the program and after equals to you can set a particular literal literal is nothing but a value a, cons uh, a simple value that you are storing into this variable so uh, after equals to you can write down the literal value that you want to store over here and then the semicolon so here we are storing the integer type information uh, in the i variable and having the value 5 so 5 is the literal i is the variable and integer is the data type in this video we are going to talk about only the primitive data types that we have in apex not uh, the, other, the other data types that we are going to use later on the, uh, those data types will be included into the next video so without wasting any further time let's start with the data types that we have in apex so the first one is integer data type integer data type is basically used to store numbers and that uh, what i mean by that is non fractional numbers so if you want to store non fractional numbers you can use integer data types and integer data types are further divided into two sub types first one is integer again and second one is long so integer has a shorter range which is mentioned over here and long has a longer range which is mentioned over here so this is the difference between integer and long if you want to store a big number then use long and if you uh, if like if you want to use a uh, or if you want to store a shorter number uh, as compared to of, of, as a, uh, of a long then use integer. So here is the simple program of the integer data type. Uh, first I have created an integer and then the variable and then I have assigned a value 5 to it and then after that I am just printing it over there. That's it. This is how you can declare an integer data type. And here is the program of long data type where I have declared uh, a long L variable where I have assigned a longer value which is not uh, in, like which, is, which cannot be stored into integer and to store that information I have to specify L as well either capital or small but I do need to specify capital or small L otherwise there will be a compile time error and let me tell you why that error will be there because this compiler apex compiler treats any number uh, which is written over here as integer by default but if the number is not into the range of integer then you uh, like explicitly need to specify a capital L or small l over there just to indicate the compiler that this is a long number or this is a long value not an integer one in any case if the value uh, which is assigned onto a particular variable is not into that particular range then it will throw a compile time error if you are assigning it right away but if you're doing some operations like let's say if you have stored something into integer uh, which is in its range only and you have uh, also stored another integer like let me show you a program over here as you can see there's an integer a there's an integer b both of them are into the range of integer only but when i'm gonna uh, add them and will add it into the c variable when we add two integers and if the output goes out of the range then compiler automatically puts it back into the range hence the number gets changed so make sure to use long instead of integer whenever there is uh, multiple operations involved with that number or with that variable uh, that can like exceed the range of integer the second one floating point data type so if you want to store non-fractional data types or non-fractional values use integer or long but if you want to store fractional values that th those are in decimals or those are in points then in that case you have to use a floating point data type and floating point data types are divided into two subtypes one double and the second one is decimal okay so as i mentioned floating point data type that does not mean that apex also has float data type 
if you are from java background or if you uh, your coding background is from c sharp or something else then it's not similar apex is different apex does not have float as a data type so make sure you use either double or decimal depending on the number that you want to store over there but you do not have float over here now let's talk about the double data type so here's the program in this program i have simply declared a double then d as a variable and assign a, a, a double value to it and then uh, after that if i will do any operations or if i'll just print it into the debug logs it will get printed in the fraction so this is the simple way how you can store a fractional value using the double data type now the second data type that i want to talk about is decimal decimal is similar to double uh, it stores mainly the currency fields value uh, or basically it is used to store the values of the currency fields in our salesforce objects uh, there is not much difference between double and decimal but the thing is you can use uh, like decimal variables to store the currency fields and there are multiple functions available into the decimal uh, with the de decimal data type using which we can simply round off or uh, round off the currency fields or we can do different different operations which we cannot do using double but there is not much difference between double and decimal and by the way this is the program that will explain you how to use decimal as a data type so over here i have created a, a decimal variable and into that i have stored the decimal data type like this now the third data type that we have uh, in the different types of data types is boolean so for that i have a question for you do you want me to teach all the data types over here your answer will be the yes or no exactly so if you want to store the information of yes or no or if you want to store true or false then you're going to use boolean data type which will store only true or false values that's it and here's the program that will explain you how you can use boolean as a data type here, over here i've declared boolean b is equals to uh, false or true whatever you want to store and then just print it over there that's it so the fourth data type is string yes string not character or cat which we uh, used to have in other different different languages that we used to program in so over here if you want to store any alphanumeric uh, character string or if you really want to store a string then you'll use string data type like this string s is equals to and you need to make sure that the uh, like the literal or the value that you are storing into the string data type needs to be in single quotes not in double quotes because single quotes uh, like if you talk about java over there single quotes basically means characters and double quotes means string but here single quote is considered as a string so whatever you'll write down in under single quotes that will be considered as a string and that you can store into a string variable uh, which has a string data type in strings you can store any type of character the fifth and the very different data type that we have in apex is date date time date time all of these three i consider uh, under date so we have a date data type uh, which has which is divided into three sub types date time and date time and you have already understood what they are used for date is used to store only the date time is used to only store the time and date time is store uh, is used to store date and time both so here is a program that will explain you how you can assign a date value to the date variable so first you have to write down the date type date d is equals to now you do not have to write down single quotes then uh, your whatever year it is then whatever month it is and then uh, whatever day it is and then the uh, like end the semicolon or uh, end the single quotes and then the semicolon no it doesn't works like that it's a simple string that will not get assigned automatically to the date variable how you have to do it is you have to use a static method of the date class like date dot new instance and then you have to provide here first as a, as an argument and the second argument will be month and the third argument will be the date this is how you will assign a date value to the date variable now the second type of date uh, data type that we have is time and that's not a date data type but it's a time data type but we will consider it into the date data type but still it's yes okay here's the program in this program uh, as you can see we have written time t is equals to new and then again we do not have to write it down a string of the time we have to use the static method of the time uh, data, like time class and then time dot new instance and then we have to pass hours as a first argument minutes as a second argument seconds as a third argument and a fourth argument should be millisecond so this is how we simply assign a time value to a time Variable. in time as well we have multiple methods so just try all of them out now let's talk about the third and very important data type date time so here's the program for date time 
how you can assign a value to a date time uh, variable let's see first you have to declare the data type date time then dd is equals to date time dot new instance first argument will be your year second argument will be your what month uh, third argument will be your day fourth argument will be your hours fifth argument will be the minutes sixth argument will be the seconds what so many arguments i really don't want to store that kind of information right now over there don't worry this is just a single method you have another methods as well that you can use to initialize the value of a date time variable so try the try them out the sixth and the very important data type that we have in apex is id yes id in any other language we really do not have a, uh, any kind of variable or any kind of data type basically uh, which is called as id but over here we do have that because if you want to store a record id in apex then where you're going to store it into string no you'll store it in id data type so this is how you can store it id i is equals to this specify the id in a string format and you can specify the 15 digit as well and the 18 digit record id as well there are two types of record ids 15 digit and 18 digit so you can specify any uh, any one of them over there and if you'll specify the 15 digit one when it will get assigned to the uh, variable uh, written on the left side it will automatically convert that into a 18 digit record id but if you're trying to assign an invalid value to the id variable then in that case there will be a runtime exception that will get generated whenever you will try to execute that program and whenever that the program uh, will reach to that particular line where you are assigning an invalid id to an id variable the last but not the least data type is blob b l o b yes this is similar to the blob data type that we have into the databases where we store the files or using which we store the files into the database so it's similar over here if you want to store a binary object into apex uh, having the yeah, binary data then in that case you can use the blob variable or the blob data type here is a simple program of blob data type so blob uh, i mean to store the information into blob you first need to store uh, all of the that binary information into the character string or not the character string into the string and then you need to convert it to a uh, blob data type or uh, using the blob dot value of uh, then the string has an argument and then it will be stored into the blob data type and if you want to convert that information again back to the string and in that case you can use the to string method like this and that's all what you need to learn about apex variables and data types now just try out your hands on to your developer console and create these different different types of data type with the different different types of variables assigning them different different literals see you in the next video of s objects i'm going to explain in that video that what s objects are how to create them how to use them and what is the significance of s objects so stay tuned i'm going to upload that video very soon till then try your hands on to it take care and bye bye